Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop. And uh showed you guys a little earlier today the the CNC router as it showed up. See I kinda I had intentions on building another little table and having it on there where I could roll it around the shop, but also thought it was gonna be a lot heavier than it actually was. So see here I got the CN the router actually up on the table and uh, all this is just some half inch MDF that I've got, uh, got screws countersunk into and I got two more back there in the back and that's just so I can take drywall screws or whatever and screw my material directly to it. Um, that way I don't have to worry about ruining the bit on the aluminum uh, T-slot table or anything. Uh, see right beside it is the little black control box. This basically the power for all the steppers and the spin, the spindle motor and all that. The spindle by itself is fairly quiet. Um, water pools are a little stronger and a little quieter, but <laughs> whatever. You gotta do what you gotta do. And then directly on the other side, I got the computer and I've actually got Mach 3 up right now. Um, it's kind of a, a whole lot for one little one thing. Um, it's just a trial version of Mach 3. I gotta I gotta buy the the product key or whatever for it, but it does come Mach 3 does come with a couple little pieces of G code. Um, for like samples and whatnot. The only thing that's different between the full version of Mach 3 and the, the demo version is I think the demo version limits you to around a hundred lines of code. And here on our little Roadrunner piece, this is a little sample G code they give you. That's a hundred lines of code, and you can see it just stops. <laughs> um, I think the I think the demo or the the license fee like 175 bucks. So it's kind of kind of expensive, but not too bad considering. So. What I do, I'll zoom out here. Um, I'm gonna move the camera around. I know y'all get all kind of motion sickness because I move the camera all over the place. But, get over it. <laughs> here, um, you can see, well, you can see the, the machine, but you can't see me. Uh -huh. The mystery man. Sing so here. And issues in the, the keyboard here I can jog all three axes uh, to go to zero then they all go to where they're, they're supposed to be for zero um, you can see that I've got the spoil board actually hanging out past the, the end of the machine that's because there's about an inch of cutting area outside of the, the frame of the machine that it would have been nice if they would have extended that T-slot table out a little bit. But they didn't. So, spoil board MDF kind of comes to the rescue. Um, another nifty little thing that I've got that came with this thing is this little doohickey bob right here. And I will zoom in, er, zoom in a little bit. See, basically, you got your your bit here under the spindle. I got the spindle power off right now. And you got this little plate that's about three quarters of an inch thick and then you got this little alligator clip wire. So all you do is you put your alligator clip here on the bit. You put your disc with the, the silver part under your bit. Come over here on Mach 3 after fiddling with a couple of hours of code trying to get it to work. You hit auto tool zero. Now what happens is the spindle will move down, touch it, and then it'll lift itself right back up, theoretically. <laughs> but and what, what it does, when it does that, it actually automatically sets your zero for you. Let's see here, let's try this again. All right, here we go. Here, your auto tool zero, it'll come down, just barely touch it, and it lifts it back up, and then you can move the little disc here out from under it. 
And what that does, it gives you on your code that you put in here, it'll tell you, uh, your code tells you how much of a gap to put between the bit and your surface. So say if I was going to machine this piece of spoil board here with that fitting under there, when I tell the, uh, the G-code software, when Mach 3 and the cam and all that stuff sits there and says, okay, your surface is an eighth of an inch thick and your bit is going to be three quarters of an inch above that and it'll go, it'll home around to where it's going to go and then it'll go, it'll plunge down into your, your material exactly how much you want. You don't have to worry about it. Now I've got the code set up to where it'll, uh, it'll put a point zero zero two, so two thousandths of an inch gap between the bottom of the bit and the, the top surface of your cutting material. Well, plus the three quarters of an inch for the disc here. So it'd be basically three quarters of an inch and two thousandths of an inch gap. And then as it moves over to your area, it'll sit there and kinda do its thing. So, move the camera again. For those who have never really messed with Mach 3 or G-Code or any of that stuff, this is basically Mach 3 here. Um, I'm not a wizard at this at all. Um, this is going to be kind of self-taught. Everything I've learned up to this point is just by watching my buddy Chris kind of mess around and cut in the parts for the F-14. But, uh, I mean, this is basically the the user interface for the uh, for the actual G-code controller for everything on the the router side. This is actually tells the router what to do and all that stuff. But um, down here on keyboard, see you got arrow buttons, page up, page down. As you go, arrows. See the digital readouts change. Same thing with all disease. Then if I had a fourth axis, like a rotary axis, that would be down here, but I don't have it, so whatever. Um, when you hit this little go to zero, wherever you zeroed these at last time is where it's gonna go. So hit go to zero, and it'll just go boop, right back where it's supposed to be. <laughs> or where you, you had it last. So, um, these little Chinese routers, they don't, a couple of things they don't come with are limit switches. So when it gets to the end of its physical, uh, if it gets to the end of the physical amount that it can travel, but the this is still telling it to move, it's gonna keep moving and it'll just sit there and if the stepper motors and all this stuff strong enough, I mean, it could technically rip itself apart. But don't have to worry about that. So I don't have to worry too much uh, to deal with it at that moment. These aren't the strongest steppers, or, but they'll get me uh, around. Um, the little automatic tool setting, this is the little right there, little auto tool zero. And then up here under operator, you've got uh, edit button script, and you'll see buttons start flashing. And you can actually write up codes and all this stuff. Uh, I've hit auto tool zero, this is the uh, what'll pop up if you have anything written in here. If you don't have anything written in there, um, it just it'll just be blank. This particular code I found off of good old Google. I just Googled CNC touch probe setup or installation or something like that. Now I think it was an instructables uh, to where he basically showed you, well, he showed you a picture of his little plate. Um, it's homemade. The one I've got like 20 bucks off eBay. Uh, but he shows you that and then he kind of, he shows you a video of the whole thing working and then he shows how to put the the code and at the bottom of the page he has the code. Um, the only issues I had with the, the code is it's all in metric when you get it. I had to change everything over to inches. So move this thing around a little bit. So you can see here I've got the this number here. Basically if that bit moves more than a half an inch um, it'll sit there and it'll pop up an error. I'm actually going to make that a quarter of an inch. Just come up here and save it. Uh, the Z offset here, 0.752. That's actually your that little plate thickness. And then the the Z sal is just how much above the the thickness of your plate that you want it to move. So once you get all that stuff kind of figured out for inches, it works pretty pretty well. 
Um, the other issue I was having for a while that was really making me scratch my head is it would come down and it would touch the plate perfectly, but then it would want to go all the way back up and it would actually get to its mechanical stops and uh, or its limits. And it would just sit there and you'd hear the, the stepper motor kind of stutter and trying to keep moving, but it wasn't able to do that. Um, <coughs> his code originally, right here where you see it says G0 Z Sal. It said, uh, oh, I think it was G0 Z, then it was parentheses and two spaces plus uh, two two more spaces then it said Z Sal um, which I never could really figure out what it was doing so I saw that and I was like well let's take the, the Z and then the, the spaces and put the Z Sal inside the parentheses as soon as I did that hunky dory everything started working I don't know why it was kind of weird because you know on his video he had it written the way it was and it worked fine for him so save that close out of here um, bunch of other little things like uh, when I was setting up this particular one up here under um, native units is what you would actually pick on to for your motor tuning for whether it's inches or or metric this one's set up under metric then under motor tuning um, I just basically the paper that they they give you and by paper I mean literally one sheet of paper this is all they give you <laughs> one sheet of paper I just put in the numbers that they said on the paper and uh, surprisingly it worked out exactly what what they said it was I sat there and stuck a dial micrometer on the thing and everything was within a couple of thousandths of an inch so it was good enough for me so when you come in here and you put in your your numbers for your uh, your X Y and Z in this case for the X and Y I've got 400 steps per and then per unit or whatever, then 4,000 for the millimeters per minute, and then 200 millimeters a minute acceleration. And same thing, and then on Z, it's all the same except for the velocity and acceleration is 1,000 and 100. Um, the other one's ports and pins, uh, motor outputs. This thing has it set up to where you can actually control the spindle through Mach 3. I haven't figured out how to do that yet because they don't tell you <laughs> lovely them so I've put in a couple emails to some other places that sell these things that supposedly have better customer service so we'll see if that works um, the big thing is the uh, the little touch probe there for the the depth setting um, if you come in here and you hit probe I'll zoom you guys in probe there um, it's port one and it's a fifth uh, actually pin number 15 on mine and then it was active low for the the direction and that seemed to work out pretty well um, everything else though as far as setups were per that sheet of paper um, so I can't really complain too much everything has worked out fairly well it's been I was actually expecting a lot of headaches but it, it hasn't been um, one thing I did when I first got it running I was having that little Roadrunner. I'll show you the first, the very, very first one I tried to cut. That little hole guy right there. That's supposed to be the Roadrunner. Yeah, that one little hole. <laughs> it's supposed. That was supposed to be this size. Um, what was actually happening is the code for the Roadrunner is in inches, and then because of doing those native units in millimeters it automatically defaults everything in millimeters so i was having all these issues about getting this stupid thing to to cut in inches and it was the two options i found was either you could change the native units to inches and then redo all those settings with uh some math or another thing i was got to looking at is here under the settings menu right up here down here in the bottom corner it's got units to where you can change between inches and millimeters to where Mach 3 does it all for you. So all I did was come in here and change it from millimeters to inches and that one little click gave me the Roadrunner that I was expecting to see. So that's, I mean, that's basically Mach 3 in itself. Um, then there's also Bobcad Cam. They, basically for, <laughs> you need three programs to cut apart um, 
for some reason Bobcat is still popping up in demo mode. I gotta call and get it activated tomorrow. Um, so anyway, you need three part. You need three programs. You need a CAD program to draw your part. You need a CAM program to take your part and convert it into G code, and then you need a G code program or like Mach 3 or Linux CNC to actually read the G code and put out the the pulses for the steppers on your machine. Um, what you see right here is actually all the G code for um, for the uh, equipment tray on the bottom of the fuselage that'll go on those those foam bits and foam areas, those vertical engines or whatever. So basically, what it is, I just took this and then uh. Oh, well, where is it? Anyway, I just I, I kind of moved it to where the corners were up here at zero zero, just to translate, and then uh, drag it, then bring it over here and place it in the corner. Hit escape to exit out. And there she happens to be. So and. Basically, once I get my uh, get this activated, I can save this G code. I can pop some wood over there on the router, and off we'll go to, to cut out the equipment tray. I've also got all of the G10 parts for the the flaps and the spoilers and all that stuff cut out, or not cut out, but drawn up. It's just a matter of getting material and getting a Mach 3 license. And Bobcat activated, and I can sit there and start chopping out parts. And uh, other than that, it won't be much longer till I got two wing panels closed up and start uh, <laughs> start making some, start getting some wings done, and start actually building an airplane instead of laying one up. So, anyways, told you guys I'd do like a little little video here on. Bobcat and Cam and all that stuff and um, basically that's that's all it is to CNC and um, there's a CNC router there's not a whole lot to it when I sit there and when I get ready to start actually cutting some parts and whatnot I'll uh, uh, I'll pop the video camera back in the back up and we'll kind of show you guys how much fun this is so it's it's definitely different doing this I'm quite quite surprised at how much you have to learn to bring an airplane or a kit to the market <laughs> nice thing is when I get ready to do my Dornier 335 that's gonna be the next big project I'm gonna I'm gonna at least do uh, a, a glass fuse and cows and all that stuff but anyways I got too much crap to do with the F-14 before I can even think about doing that airplane uh, but it's kind of hard to not to think about doing that one when somebody's already working on landing gear so or at least the designs for the landing gear so um anyways you ladies and gentlemen have a good afternoon and we will see y'all back here in the shop